nigga got it bad cause I'm brown And not the other color so police think They have the authority to kill a minority Fuck that shit cause I ain't the one For a punk motherfucker with a badge and a gun to be beaten on And thrown in jail we can go to the toe in the middle This is a normal day in London there are more than 190 different gangs engaged in running battles across the city's poorer areas. Children grow up in an environment of gangland rap culture that glamorises violence and drugs and regards those who go to school or work with contempt. In certain areas in South London last year, several teenagers died, victims of gang terror. One of these areas is Brixton. Here strangers are outcasts. This gang speaks openly about their culture. Man, everyone's scared, like, not just me is scared. The, the streets are very sticky, very sticky <laughs> at the moment, it's true, man. It's because of them, because we've got nothing to do, what we got to do? Go on the street, well, what else we got to do? They ain't given nothing for us, they ain't got nothing for us to do. So we just roam the street, that's what we got to do. And we've got trouble, that's how we get into trouble, get into beef. Nowadays, someone getting stabbed over nothing is nothing, man. Well, if someone wants your phone, they're going to have your phone, they'll just shank you straight away. Yeah, it's it's you no, know, I got stabbed over helping my friend, that's all. Show, show him your head. <laughs> yeah, I got stabbed on Halloween night here, got stabbed here, here and slapped on the head. Like, it's yeah. a lot of our area, like Peckham and Brixton. They don't like each other, so like, if you're Peckham, you come walk in here, yeah, so that's over for him, innit? You get me? <laughs> Being in the wrong place at the wrong time can have fatal consequences. Last year, 27 youngsters became casualties in this bloody struggle. Almost all of them were black, as were their killers. Their families cannot understand why their children had to die. They feel abandoned by the government. We hope the authority will do more to eradicate the gang, the knife culture among our kids. The former boxer Mark Prince lost his son Kieran two years ago. A classmate of his attacked him with a knife. I needed to ask God, don't let my son be taken from me. Um, save his life inside of me. I said, but if you don't, and it's, it's meant to be like this, help me to be able to accept it. Now he tries to keep in contact with the gangs. He speaks with their ringleaders in the hope of saving other youngsters from the same fate. Faced with this daily threat, parents are forced to keep a somewhat paranoid eye on their kids. Now I don't even want to let my son out because I'm so scared that, you know, that anything's going to happen to him. All week he's been with us. We, I ain't let him out at all. All his friends, they're not allowed out because, you know, the gangs and stuff. To me, it's, to me, it's just got like America, and America is violent, so it's, it's happening here, just the same. According to a United Nations report, now Britain has actually become the most violent industrial nation. The chances of being assaulted or mugged here are almost higher than in the US. London, more dangerous than New York. Recently, the British Home Secretary, Jackie Smith, visited former gang leaders but even she acknowledged that she is too scared to travel in some areas after dark. Although the crime rate has gone down in Britain, criminals are becoming ever younger. Young children really accept a high level of violence as the norm now. Um, who's to blame? It depends how you look at it. Almost 100% adults. A lot of our children get involved in crime because they don't feel safe, and that's the, um, the fault of adults around them. Us as a society, parents, school, whatever. Um, also, you have to, you can't get away from the, the responsibility. The individuals who killed those people are there to blame because nobody forced them to stab or shoot anyone. It's a decision they made. So ultimately, they're to blame as well. Homemade videos exalt gang culture. Weapons are regarded as a status symbol and trouble with the police enhances your reputation. The British government is trying to control the problem with tighter legislation. Whoever is caught carrying a knife risks a jail sentence. Handgun ownership has been outlawed for the last 10 years. However, the latest poll indicated that one in five youths has access to weapons. This is a phenomenon we've seen in, in London and Manchester. 
uh, girlfriends carrying guns on behalf of other people and knives, um, girlfriends and younger people being used to smuggle guns in and out of entertainment venues, people who the police aren't um, keeping an eye on are doing some of the kind of dirty work running the errands for the people who are connected to the gangs. The flood of cheap replica weapons from Eastern Europe is also a huge problem. Last year, hundreds of such weapons were confiscated from the streets. It is estimated that there are more than half a million in circulation in the country. Since the series of murders over the last year, an armed crime task force has been set up by the Home Office. Well, clearly, from, from the figures that, that you're aware of, it's too easy. And that is something that we're very conscious of, and that's why one of our work streams on the Tackling Gangs Action Programme is looking at the supply. Because we can do all we want at the front end in terms of supporting young people uh, in helping them not get involved in gang activity and firearms activity. But unless we do something about choking the supply of firearms off into the country, then we'll always be limited in what we can achieve. In Hackney, one of the most violent of the London boroughs, the town administration is trying to keep youngsters off the street with music. Internet radio station Life FM is training youngsters who are interested in radio as DJs. So far, almost all the participating youngsters have experienced violence in their lives or come from a background of violence. Well, I used to be in it, but you know, I had to find a way out quick because it was leading to a dead end. And gang culture is ever growing. And I don't think that it'll stop. There's so many different influences to pull you into the mix. So it's very seductive as well. The workshop is funded through private donations and advertising revenue. Only a small proportion comes from the public purse. Mayor Ken Livingston has guaranteed more than a million pounds for youth projects, but that money is taking a long time to filter through. They didn't come here the day this, this opened. You know, it, it, it took some time before they would, they would come. Um, and unfortunately, the, the grim reality is, yes, there's about 20 kids in here now, but there's still over a thousand kids outside, you know, and, and, and the goal is to have all of them in a safe place, in a safe environment where they can express themselves. In districts like Hackney, more than half the black boys grow up without a father. They perform poorly in schools and do not really have good prospects on the job market. For many of them, the only way to make money is through pushing drugs and joining a gang. They'll never make that kind of money working in the local burger bar or the local store stacking shelves. And partly it's this I want it now uh, culture. Partly it's this idea that I, d I see no means of getting that kind of money. And partly it's the fact, as I've talked about already, that lacking those uh, employment opportunities, um, living in a community that has been excluded and racially disadvantaged for a generation or more, they, they feel in many respects that society has let them down, they have nothing to lose, um, and they have to do certain things in order to survive. So far, neither an understanding social programme nor the hard hand of the police has been effective. In this year alone, five more young people have been shot or stabbed in London.